Hey, John here. Today we're going to be writing the code for the game rules, uh, plus some of possibly some of the AI, or we'll at least get the framework of the AI running. So quickly, so that we're using the same terminology, so you and I are talking with the same language when we're writing the game rules. Um, on the Moncala board, I'm going to call the six pits. In fact, I'm going to call all 14 of these pits generically. Uh, but the six pits that face you and the six pits that face the opponent, I'm going to call those houses. And the two pits where you actually accumulate seeds, I'm going to call the seed, them seeds, uh, to make your score, I'm going to call those stores. So stores, houses, and they're all going to be pits and you put seeds in them. And also you're going to hear me talk about a hand because uh, when you're actually moving things around, it'll be in the hand, both from an animation point of view and, of course, from a rules point of view. So let's get started. Okay, let's go and create a... Uh, Python file called, um, let's call it uh, gameengine.py, and that's where we'll put all of our code. <laughs> let's import easy AI, and we'll make a class for the human player. Um, I'm going to make this a, uh, I'm going to call this particular version of the game Kala for the game rules. I'm probably going to make a few versions of this in time, but right now I'm going to make Kala. So Kala, uh, human player. And the class to inherit from an easy AI for the two player game is ironically, or not so ironically, called two player game, or uh, two player game, two players game. Yeah. Before I get writing too much of the class code, I'm going to go ahead and create some universal constants in this, this particular file that'll probably make my life a lot easier in the long run. Uh, just habit of mine. Uh, everyone, every programmer does things different. I'm going to call user equals one, AI equals two. <laughs> I'm going to make the board an array containing the number of seeds contained in each position. So we're starting off with one through six in the user side, the store for the user, and then the AI side, their houses, eight through 13, and then 14 will be the store for the AI. And then I'm going to have the hand be uh, position zero in the list. So I'm going to make the board to be a simple list way to store information because when the AI runs it's going to be creating a lot of copies of that board so the simpler and smaller the uh, structure that holds the board the better I'm going to make a dictionary of dictionaries containing each of the pits and some of their characteristics to make lookups easier later on This is going to allow me to uh, look up each of these uh, each of these pits by their number and get information about the pit, so I can find out who the owner is very easily. You know, it's the user or the AI. Um, I can find out what the next pit in the row is, and then for any one pit, you can also see what type of pit it is, whether it's a store or a house. So, I think this is going to make my code a lot easier to read as we go along. The methods that it's expecting to see. The first ones are required, the rest are optional. We'll go ahead and put them all in and uh, do an ugly cut and paste here. Okay, that'll get started with the init routine. Um, it's expecting players and end player. Um, it's actually mentioned in the docs for Easy AI. Uh, players is your list of two players. That's the uh, our human player and our AI player. End player not only shows you whose turn it is at the moment, but you initially set it to who you want to go first. 
So right now it's uh, the first player's turn, which I'll make the human player. Um, and then you'll have the board, which is uh, initializing this to uh, 15 elements of zero, uh, or entries of zero, a list. Uh, and then seeds per house. Uh, traditionally, the default rules are usually for four seeds per house when you start the game. Um, later on, I'm definitely going to make that an option in the thing, so I'm gonna, I'll be adding more <laughs> to this thing. Maybe a getter and setter for that particular value. Uh, let's go ahead, before we even do anything else, let's go ahead and initialize the board. So I'm going to write a new... Um, I went ahead and did the really the only three things you can do on a Moncala board. Um, I just went and made a routine so everything balances out. You can scoop up the pits out of a uh, scoop up all the seeds out of a pit. That's normal. Um, you can drop one seed into a pit, or in this case, when I'm doing a reset board, I can drop a set number of seeds, like four for each pit, or I can just drop all the seeds into the pit, which empties out the hand. That may be overkill, <laughs> but that's what I'm doing here. So to reset the board, I go through all the pits, and if there's anything in that pit, I scoop it up into the hand, so the hand should get a large number of pits. Um, of course, on the initial run, all the pits are empty, so it won't do anything. Um, and then when, uh, then for each player, go through each house and drop, in this case, four seeds into each pit. And that should initialize the board. I'm sure I've got errors here. Let me go debug them and I'll show you the results. The board has four seeds per pit on the user side and four seeds per pit on the AI side and nothing in the stores. What I plan on doing, I'm going to go ahead and do this possible moves thing. Uh, that's important for a variety of reasons, uh, but it's it's for displaying what moves you can make, um, which is important for verifying that the move you're about to make is legit. Uh, but it's also used by the AI to figure out how it should predict the future, what what makes the best move given what could be done by your opponent. Make move. Actually, I'm not going to do possible moves. I'm going to do possible moves. Uh, simple, uh, not full possible moves, because in Moncala, while I'm doing the human version, I'm just going to do what's possible next at the very next half move, but your full move, you pick up three pits out of here, and you go three here, and you land in the store. If your last move lands in the store, you get to go again. So it might be you choose this, and then you choose this. So you actually do two things. You choose two pits, not just one. But what I need to first find out is what's possible on the first choice. So maybe I'll call it a possible move choice. And then a combination of possible move choices will be your possible moves, if you, that makes sense. So it'll be a list of lists coming back from possible moves, but we'll go back a single list from an individual choice within a move. Hopefully I said that in a clear way. <laughs> uh, it'll be more obvious as we code this. Let me put it in here. So possible move choices, let's create an empty list for each house in the currently playing players house list. Is there anything in that pit on the board? If it's non-zero, then append that as a possible choice that they can make. Uh, for make move, uh, you, you pass in the, the uh, house you're wanting to scoop the seeds up out of. So it does a scoop, sets the current house to the house because it's going to be moving that a lot. And then for within range of what's now in the hand, 
it uh, finds out where the next house is using my next dictionary. So here, for next, whichever user it is, it knows what the next house is. It then drops one seed in and resets the current house. At the very end, it looks at the last, uh, the last house it was dropped in. And the reason why is uh, if this is your side here and you drop your pit into an empty one that's on your side already, um, and there's seeds in the opposite house, you both take your seed and the opposite seed and you steal them and put them into your store. Um, and so that's what we're seeing here. We have an option here to steal. So it checks to see if the current house is equal to one, which means, because I just dropped a seed in it, so if it's equal to one, that means it was empty before. Um, and given my dictionary of that current house, if the owner is the player that's playing at the moment, and given that dictionary of that house, if the role is that of a house, so I didn't drop it in a store, um, and if the opposite pit has anything in it, then scoop the current house, scoop the opposite pit, so that's now all in the hand, and then drop all into the store. Okay, read up a little bit about how I'm supposed to use the game. There's actually a method in here called play. I'm supposed to just set up the game and run dot play and it just plays and does all the stuff for me. Uh, let me show you what I've done. The uh, I've got here at the bottom. I now just run simply game dot play, which handles it all. It's kind of neat. Um, to do that, though, I had to finish out a few other things. First off, I had to fill out the function uh, for is over. And what I do is for each of the player, I check to see if their houses have at least one seed anywhere in their houses. Uh, if they doesn't, in other words, if one of the one of the sides is completely blank, there's no more pit, no more seeds on that side, uh, then the game's over. That's how the game ends. So this returns uh, true if it, either of the sides is empty. Otherwise, returns false. And then uh, for possible moves, I've done something wrong at the moment on purpose. Rather than come up with a list of lists of possible moves, I've actually made it just look at half moves. So this game right now, as it's currently written, doesn't allow you to finish a half move by ending in a uh, ending in your own store and then allowing you to go twice in the same turn. It doesn't allow you to do that. I'm gonna have to add that back in. But for just for today, I'm gonna allow it to just. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna ignore that effect at the moment. I'll have to add that in tomorrow. Um, and uh, that seems to be it. I had to do a few minor bug fixes. But uh, let me show you the game. Okay, shows the player with the score being zero because player one score versus player one. Um, all right, I'm gonna move pit four. There it is, it fills everything out. Now it says player two. I'll go ahead and choose pit 11. There it is. Emptied this, dropped one pit in each of these. Now it's actually back, scores back to zero because it's one versus one. Um, it did it. Dropped here, grabbed both sides, moved it to eight. Okay, I think it's working. Um, I'm going to... Uh, fiddle with it tomorrow in tomorrow's episode. I'm going to get the half moves working fully where you can actually do full moves. So in, instead of just entering a number in here, I'm actually going to have to put in a list. I'm going to have to do a little bit of interpretive dance. <laughs> Maybe a comma delimited choice list rather than just a single number. I think the AI is going to handle that fine. 
Um, and then I'm also going to try running the Negamax routine, see if it actually can uh, start thinking, let the AI think for itself. So tomorrow we jump into the AI, um, but today we got a basic game running. And then when we're done with that, after all that, we'll actually try putting it into the graphical interface. Interesting day. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Thank you.